time to dive into technology behind our favorite quarantine partner, Online Ludo or Ludo King. Welcome to Tech Vriddhi. This is the second video of gaming series. Do watch the first one, Game On, to understand this one in a better way. So without further ado, let's get started with level 2, anything to become a Ludo King. By the end of this video, you'll learn history of Ludo, rules of the game, which I assume you already know, but still, we'll just discuss them, concepts and algorithm used, which are NPC approach, queue learning, randomization, and finally, we'll discuss some fun facts about this game. Let's start about the game or about its history. This game is derived from the Indian game Pachisi. With time, this board game evolved and had many other names. Pachisi was created in India in the 6th century. The early evolution of this game in India is the depiction of boards on the caves of Elora. This picture you see here is the sculpture of Elora Cave No. 21, Rameshwara, depicting the Chaucer game, which is another game of the modern-day Ludo, between God Shiva and Goddess Parvati. Also, no one can forget that the great Mahabharat started after the Pandavas losing the dice game Chaucer and insult humiliation faced by Draupadi. Yet another name of this game is Chopper. The contemporary version was played by Mughal emperors, a notable example being Akbar. The Pachisi rectangular dice was converted to a cubic one and thus named Ludo in England in 1896. The Royal Navy took Ludo and converted it into a board game named Akars. Now comes the rules of the game. I hope most of you are already aware of, but still, we'll have a glimpse of them. Firstly, it's a game between 2 to 4 players. We have to roll the dice and move the token. We have to start playing as soon as 6 appears on the dice. There's an extra chance on number 6. There's also an extra chance on completing a race of one token. Also, if the token takes the same place as that of opponent's token, the opponent has to restart with his token. To reach the home in the middle of the selected color is the final aim of the game. There are extra safe zones. And finally, the player who reaches the middle of his color with all four tokens wins the game. Now let's discuss the concepts and algorithm used. Firstly, its base is on the NPC approach. It employs queue learning and it also employs randomization as one of its concepts. Let's start with the NPC or non-playable characters approach. Do you remember in the previous video, I talked about NPC and mentioned that these are the characters or players that are not part of the game and just improve our sense of realization, same as the case of GTA Vice City? Well, it turns out that these NPCs have different role for different games. Here, in Ludo King, we as players use basic Ludo rules to bring that game from human to non-living but machine or program player as intelligently as humans. In simple words, your selected color or the token has your brain and is the NPC of this game. Now comes the second part. What is queue learning? It's an AI algorithm of learning how to behave in an unknown environment. It's a type of reinforcement learning. That means learning by itself and maximizing the rewards on the basis of that. Let's assume that this baby wants to play a game. But since she doesn't know how to read the rules, she just plays and maximizes her points on the basis of previous performance. Hence, she learned the game. Do you remember the intelligent agent part in the previous video? Let's see the work of intelligent agent, in this case, a Ludo token. It gives the environment its present state or the position as well as it takes an action. For example, moving two steps forward and in return, it gets its new state or the new position and a reward. Let us now discuss the terms we have been using in the previous slide in detail. Firstly, what is a state? Well, state is present position in context of Ludo. It means where your tokens are before throwing the dice. For example, of these two tokens, this position and this position are their present states. 
After this, a number 2 comes on the dice, which means we have to take an action. An action is the step that will be taken after throwing the dice. In this case, we can either move this token forward or this one. Now suppose we chose this token to move forward, which means it arrived at its new state. New state is the new position after you have taken an action, according to the number on the dice, obviously. Finally, we get a reward. A reward is the outcome of your action after moving to a new state. The reward can be replacing the opponent's token, landing to a safe place or entering the middle of your house. In order to have maximum rewards, Q-Learning has a lookup table called a Q-Table that considers every situation and position of every token. This is the Q-Table for our game. This table has Q values which in the beginning all the values are zeros. Subsequently, they change themselves. As you can see, in the Y-axis are the states which can be safe space, blank space, safe inside own color, opponent's token and gap between the opponents. Whereas, x-axis has the actions, which can be taken by token 1, 2, 3 or 4. Now the question arises, how these values change themselves? Well, this is done by Bellman's equation, which is as follows. Q, S of t, A of t is equal to E and finally you can read the further equation, where S of t is the state, A of t is the action, R is the reward. These term means this section here are the Q values for the given state in a particular state. That is the updated one which we need to find out. This whole section here is the expected discounted reward. Again, the reward can be replacing the opponent's token, uh, moving towards the house or many other which I already discussed in the previous slide. And finally, this section is the given state and action which is before update updating the values. After taking into consideration the Bellman's equation, these Q values have updated themselves and these keep on updating and thus make the process iterative or repetitive. All these things are done internally and while you play against the computer, the computer is actually calculating all these Q values and move accordingly. Now here's a summary of Q learning. First, we need to initialize the queue table, then we choose an action, perform an action, measure the reward, and update the queue table. Finally, after a lot of iterations, a good queue table is ready. So finally, let us discuss the last technique or concept that is of utmost importance in games like Ludo. Suppose the dice you throw has fixed sequence, which is 5, then 6, then 1, then 3, then 4, and finally the number 2. Now just think, won't this game become biased? One person may get all the big numbers or may even play the tokens accordingly as he or she already knows what's gonna come next. To prevent this, it is necessary that the numbers are in random order. And this makes the game unbiased and interesting throughout. This is the main idea behind this randomization concept. Finally, we are going to discuss the fun facts. Here comes a famous story about a king who used to cheat with the opponent king. He had two mice who were trained and named Sundari and Mundri. Whenever a game was played, the king used to distract the opponent with stories and tales. He would then casually pronounce Sundari and Mundri and at this point the mice would come and move the pieces or the tokens around without the opponent noticing. The second story is about the great Mughal Emperor Akbar. He was so obsessed with this game that he had a separate portion for Pachisi in each of his courts. There were red and white squares divided same as that of the board game Ludo and he had 16 slaves dressed up in four colors to resemble the tokens and a platform was raised in the middle where a rock in the shape of a dice was rolled which would lead the game. He had a code for Pachisi constructed in all his palaces and traces are still visible in Agra and Allahabad. 
Now these are the examples of Pachisi code in Fatehpur Sikri. This is the end of the video. Comment in the comment section, do you like the board Ludo game that is offline one more or the online one? Also, do like, share and subscribe as the upcoming videos are gonna be even more interesting. And don't forget about that little surprise that will be disclosed at the end of the series. Till then, bye and take care.